Jesus heals a man born blind. One of my favorite stories from the book of John. Today, we read through John chapter 9. But before we do that, we'll be reading through Jesus is calling for today, for today December 1st. It's already December. When did that happen? Holy cow. The year's almost done. Christmas is right around the corner. Uh, and speaking of Christmas, uh, the Bible verse for the month of December is Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For us, for to us a child is born, he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 6. So with that, uh, let's get started in uh, Jesus is Calling for Today, December 1st. Reminder, this is written as if Jesus is talking directly to you. It's a devotional book written by Sarah Young called Jesus is Calling. All right, without further ado, today's devotional. I love you with an everlasting love, which flows out from the depths of eternity. Before you were born, I knew you. Ponder the awesome mystery of a love that encompasses you from before birth to beyond the grave. Modern man has lost the perspective of eternity. To distract himself from the gaping jaws of death, he engages in ceaseless activities and amusement. The practice of being still in my presence is almost a lost art yet it is the very stillness that enables you to experience my eternal love your need for certainty of my loving peace in order to weather the storms of life during times of severe testing even the best technology can fail you if it isn't accompanied by an external knowledge of me. Sorry, the best theology can fail you, not the best technology. Um, the ultimate uh, protection against uh, sinking during life storms is devour devoting time to develop your friendship with me. And that was inspired by a couple different sections of the Bible. I didn't get distracted by my cat at all during that and misread something. Pretty obvious. Sorry. Uh, the Lord. Of, so the two Bible verses that inspired that. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with a loving kiss of kindness. The doctor wants my string. Uh, because of, uh, that was Jeremiah 31.3. Uh, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassion never fails. They are new morning, every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Limitations. 3, 22 to 6. I really like the last sentence of that. The ultimate protection... <laughs> You're shedding! It's December, you shouldn't be shedding. Uh, the ultimate protection against sinking uh, during life storms is devoting time to develop your friendship with me. Your friendship with Jesus. I think that's... Uh, pretty solid advice and that is one of the reasons why we are doing this uh, why we are here to not only take time to develop my own personal relationship but to connect with you guys and help you uh, be a supplementary part in in your walk in your relationship with God uh, so it appears that Joxer has decided to join us he seems to really like it when we do this Bible time um, he is definitely below the camera right now I figured you guys don't really need to see my gut. But if you want to see my cat, here he is. Here's Joxer. 
Yeah. Chuck's here. Over here. Yeah. There you go. Let the people see. Oh, you're reaching out to him. Yeah. Oh, he likes being carried. But that's not what this is about. <laughs> this is about the Book of John. Um, so uh, the Book of John is going to be continuing today as Jesus uh, takes time to have conversations and to prove himself even to the most hardened of uh, people against him. Like people that know a lot and are refusing to see the truth though that's right in front of them. Sometimes it's the wisest people that have the hardest time seeing what's right in front of them. And uh, that's one of the cases with Jesus um, and who he is. Um, once again, he's in the last couple books, he's been doing things to just kind of prove who he is to people as people are having conversations like, is he actually this? Is he this? Is he that? And Jesus is telling them in all these certain ways that if they lean in, they will hear and understand. But him telling them is also driving some people away. The truth is scaring some people away and hardening people's hearts. Uh, Jesus has been having conversations with a bunch of the religious leaders at the time who are just basically like, well, you're either a demon or you're a liar. And the idea that he's even God, um, they refuse to even entertain. Um, and they keep on going back to Moses, back to Moses, back to Moses. And Jesus is like, you don't actually believe in Moses or Abraham because they were all pointing towards me. And of course, this makes them angry and they're just doing whatever they can to try to trap Jesus. And that leads us to today's story of Jesus healing a blind man. So if you haven't done it yet, I encourage you to open up your Bible, whether it's Bible Gateway, U version, or a physical Bible. And if you don't have a physical Bible, I'd be more than happy to hook you up with one. And today we are going to be reading through, yeah, uh, John chapter 9. Um, hey, right, hey, hey, careful, Joxer. Now he's starting to headbutt everything. No. All right. I'm going to put you down. All right, bud. All right. Just because last time he headbutted the cameras, he was jumping down. And uh, he took it all out with him. All right. So, John, chapter 9. Um, yeah. Let's jump into it. As Jesus was, was walking along. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi! His disciples asked him, Why was this man born blind? Was it uh, because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the task assigned by the one who sent us the night is coming and then no one can work but while I am here in the world I am the light of the world I'm gonna pause for today's I'm just gonna read through when things jump out at me I'm gonna say them and then I'll summarize it with um, uh, the Jesus what happened a lot of times uh, when uh, things happen or people are born a certain way or there's this deformity or this thing or that thing. It's like, all right, so what did they do wrong? And they've been looked down at throughout history, like something must be wrong with them. And this is something that we've projected on them for a long time. And Jesus says, it's not because of the sins. It's not because of something that someone did wrong. That's not what it's about. And when we have that kind of mindset and we victim blame and victim shame like they were doing back then that's not in the heart and that's not coming alongside what jesus uh taught and once again he confirms once again that he is the light of god in this world all right continuing from verse six then he spit on the ground made mud with saliva and spread the mug mud over the blind man's eyes he told him go wash yourself in the pool of salome Salome means scent. 
So the man went and washed and came back seeing. His neighbors and uh, others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was, and others said no. He just looks like him. Then what happened to the blind beggar, right? Like, what happened to him? Is he just gone and this other guy that looks suspiciously like him just magically shows up? Like, come on, give me a break. People are refusing to see the truth right in front of them. Um, one of uh, the other things is the whole, like, okay, yeah, spit in mud and go wash. Uh, always reminds me of that warrior that came to get healed and was like, I have to go and dunk myself. No, I'm not doing that. That's a peasant's thing. And here's this blind man going like, yeah, sure. You know, I don't know what other options I have. And this great warrior, you know, he was knocking on death's door, but he was like, I can't be so undignified. And here's this guy with mud spit on his face. <laughs> he goes and washes in the river and is healed. Like, the humility that just kind of flows out of this guy is huge. It's really cool. Um, continuing uh, from verse 9. Some said he was born, uh, he was, and others said, no, he just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, yes, I am the same one. They asked, who healed you? What happened? He told them, the man they called Jesus made mud, spread it over my eyes, and told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. So I went and washed, and now I can see. Where is he now? They asked. I, I don't know. Then they took the man who had been blind to the Pharisees because it was the Sabbath that Jesus had made the mud and healed him. The Pharisees asked the man all about it. So he told them, he put mud over my eyes and when I washed it away, I could see. Some Pharisees said, this man Jesus is not from God for he is working on the Sabbath. Others said, but how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So. There was a deep division of opinion among them. Want to do a quick pause? These people are coming to them to ask the judge over a situation. They are working on the Sabbath. This man cannot be from God because he's working on the Sabbath like we are right now. And that idea of intellectual work and judgment and stuff like that, I guess is just not perceived as work in their minds. But if you've ever been doing anything creative, that thinking process is definitely a, a time and a period of work, especially when judgment, it adds so much stress sometimes. So they're completely blind to what they're doing and they're condemning themselves. They're working on the Sabbath too. Um, so uh, continuing from verse uh, 17. Then the Pharisees again questioned the man who had been blind and demanded, What is your opinion about this man who healed you? The man replied, I think he must be a prophet. The Jewish leaders still refused to believe the man had been blind so he and could now see. So they called in his parents and they asked him, Is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he see now? His parents replied, we know this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him. He is old enough to speak for himself. So I both kind of like this, because one, this could be them reacting in fear of, like, we don't want to get kicked out, we don't want to get banished, we don't want to do this. Or it could just be like, we weren't there, you're asking us to testify about something that we don't know. But we can testify about what, about what we do know. He can see now, and he was born blind. And that's kind of always how I see it. Um, and it could be both. But his parents are being very truthful also in this part. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled from the synagogue. See, so they could be saying this, and it, the Bible does say that they were saying this, because they were afraid, but they're also speaking the truth. And they're not speaking into something more so, but they're refusing to say, yeah, Jesus is who it is. And they're like, he's saying it's Jesus. We think it probably is Jesus, but we're not gonna say it because we don't wanna be expelled. Um, 
verse 23. That's why they said, he is old enough, ask him. So they're just kind of passing the buck there. They don't want to take a stand. Um, but once again, though, they did say what they know and they know is true. There's that seed of doubt and not really wanting to stand up for the truth that happened there. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and told him, God should let the glory get the glory for this because we know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. Here's one of my favorite parts. I don't know whether he's a sinner, the man replied, but I know this. I was blind and now I can see. But what did he do? They asked. How did he heal you? Look, the man exclaimed. I told you once. Didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? <sighs> then they cursed him and said, You are his disciple, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. Which is a very different charge to what they were saying in the last chapter. Oh, well, yeah, we know he's from this place. How can he be from Galilee? Like, ugh, ew. Um, so, like, now they're even going back on their own words, trying to find ways to justify their own ignorance in this. But I love that. Like, oh, you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Like, one of the hugest disses in this. But totally, like, oh, man, I love it. It's so good. Uh, uh, why, that's very strange, the man replied. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from? We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. You were born a total sinner, they answered. And you are trying to teach us? And they threw him out of the synagogue. Here's this guy just stating the truth, getting tired with all of the questions, turns it back on them, gives them evidence using their own scripture against them, and instead of them thinking or being humble they get puffed up and proud how dare you try to teach us you man that was born blind you're obviously a sinner and they start victim blaming and they just get put up this wall and they block it all from happening um so here's this man that stood up for truth that knew the scriptures even though he was blind that stood up to the powerful and yes he did get kicked out of the church and now here's the big point of the story. Verse 35 uh, to the end, uh, spiritual blindness. When Jesus heard what had happened, he found the man and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you. Yes, Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshipped Jesus. Then Jesus told him, I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind, and to show those who think they see that they are blind. Some Pharisees who were standing nearby heard him and asked, Are you saying we're blind? If you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, Jesus replied. But you remain guilty because guilty, you claim to see. The, like, when you put yourself into the context of everything going on here, like, Jesus it go, is, is calling out the most powerful religious leaders in the time. People that have the ears of the law that can influence it and be like, yeah, we want this guy taken out. Which they do uh, at this point in time in history. Like, this is something that like, people are put to death. People are publicly stoned and the law is like, yeah, cool. Even though you're um, under like our Roman rule, we're going to allow this to happen. As you saw with the woman caught in adultery. They were going to 
throw rocks at this woman in the street. Publicly, like, bash her brains in with rocks, breaking her leg. Like, it sounds like such a painful way to die. And the religious leaders were like, yeah, you can go and do this. This is something that they, they were allowed to lawfully call out and to do. They were lawfully allowed to call out public executions like this, which is insane, really. So you have this blind man standing up to them. And then you have Jesus standing up to them. And then it's going, and because they claim to see and to understand like God and the Bible, yet they're completely blind to what's happening. You know, I'm gonna let them go on believing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite them to lean in. I'm gonna invite them to lean in to hear my teaching, to actually hear me, to see the evidence and the miracles that they claim to want to see. Yet, you're gonna say that you're, you can still see everything so clearly, but you are so blind to what's happening in front of you. And, um, that is a reminder, like. To, to ask God to help us see what's right in front of us that that's what's right under our nose that we are completely blind to that we can't see whether it's you know the actions the answers um, the issues like it's so easy to have things so close to us that we can't see them um, and especially with things like this where we are determined to think that we are right or that we're in the right yet we can be completely in the wrong. And we can do that with ourselves, with people that we love, um, you know, with, like, especially family members, um, with celebrities. Like, there's a lot of disgusting things happening online where, you know, just because the cele like, people like this celebrity, they can't think that they did this awful thing and there's these giant petitions to have this person be like above the law essentially um because you know well he can't do this because of this reason and we have a tendency to be so blind to the truth that's right in front of us so it's a good prayer to ask god to reveal the truth of what's right in front of us and what we're blind to um and that's what a lot of this happens and spiritual blindness is so huge and these religious leaders think they know everything yet they are completely blind to the spiritual truth of jesus being god that's right in front of them doing miracles right in front of their eyes the blind are seeing the lame walk like it's being done and they are blind to it um all right so here's one of the last things um, Jesus answers life's essential questions. John 9, 1 to 5. Jesus was walking along. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why is this man born blind? Was it because of his sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This, is, this happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the task assigned by us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and no one can when and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus walks by a man who was born blind, his disciples ask the obvious question. Why do bad things happen to people like this man? Their assumption is that the bad things happen to people who do bad things it was because of his own sin or his parents sin jesus debunks that equation decoupling the reality of the griefs we all experience from our own cause and effect behavior rather says jesus bad things are a normal aspect of the reality of our reality and he intends to upend their destructive impact by making beauty out of the ugly the man was born blind, Jesus says, so that the power of God can be seen in him. And then he embodies those words by offering the man a chance to see the fir for the first time in his life. And he will do what Jesus asks him to do. 
And that section uh, reminds me of... Uh, I think his name is Nick Beach. Um, uh, I first got to know him because of a brilliant short film. It's about 20 minutes long called The Butterfly Circus. The Butterfly Circus. The Butterfly Circus. Brilliant movie. Here's this guy born with no arms and his legs. He has like one leg, but it's like a baby leg. Um, if you watched Deadpool 2 when he has like the little... It's kind of like that. It's a useless leg. He's essentially born with no arms and no legs. Um, and uh, he plays the sideshow character. And then... Um, and he thinks that he's completely useless. He has zero value. And he he's literally a man that, turn, that God himself turned his back on. This is what he believes. And he joins the freak show. And his only purpose in life is for people to laugh at him me in my story there was a point in my life where i thought the only my only purpose is to make others feel better by me getting hurt that's my only value that's what i thought and uh in the butterfly circus uh he joins this actually traveling circus and they find skills uh, that he can do and it turns out he can swim in this very powerful moment of the movie and I'm not going to get too far beyond that but um, the uh, it, it's a brilliant movie but anyways they find out that he can swim and that he has value beyond what he could see in, right in front of him um, as I made decisions to follow God one of the big things that God did through me was that I don't, I, I can make people feel better by me just being absolutely miserable. That might be something that the devil's putting in my ear and something that I've seen some evidence to, but God showed me that I can be joyful and have others be joyful around me and bring them out of their, their funk sometimes. That God can use me to enter into people's struggles and bring them moments of levity and joy. That I could share his love and his joy with others, even strangers. And my purpose got so much wider and deeper. And it's one of the reasons why I joined YFC, or Youth Unlimited now. Uh, because, yeah, I there's more that I can do with God than against God. In fact, everything I did without God ended up being completely useless. So I could do nothing really of value, especially spiritual significance, nothing, unless I do it with God. Um, and, and yeah, that's my story. That's the story of this man that was born blind. One of my favorite stories, because it's just this ordinary guy, the low, that, um, you know, this, this guy shows so much. And if you're in a position where you're low on the totem pole of a workplace or whatever, and you have good ideas, and your higher-ups don't listen, they're not being good leaders. And if you're in a position of being higher up and you're not listening to the people beneath you, you're not being a good leader, uh, especially according to this leadership principle that we just read through uh, here in uh, John chapter nine, because this blind man that was seen as way beneath the religious leaders offered wisdom far beyond themselves and they just rejected it. So no matter who you are, God can give you wisdom wisdom that you need to hear that you can pass forward to others that have good sneeze <sighs> sorry jockster he hates when i sneeze when he's on my lap sorry bud um anyways let's pray ajc awesome jesus christ um 
you know, we ask you to use us to give us wisdom that we can pass forward and share. I pray that we can humble ourselves to hear those that we see as kind of beneath us in certain areas of life, to be able to hear them, to hear their great ideas and to find ways of implementing those good ones and give us discernment to know whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. And Lord, help us not to be spiritually blind, but to see the truth that's right in front of our faces. And Lord, when we are blind to something right in front of us, give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the wisdom to know what to do with it. Lord, I thank you uh, for that reminder that yeah, there are things that we are blind to. And I pray that we can be in tuned and focusing on you enough that we can see what we need to see around us. And that we don't get so prideful that we refuse to see uh, those other things and we refuse to listen to others. And Lord, when we need it, give us the boldness of this blind man. And even his parents who still said the truth yet were afraid and didn't want to get kicked out, I think that they still said something and they spoke to the truth. But Lord, I pray for more boldness than that which they had and more strength. And Lord, I thank you for understanding our fear and meet us in our fear to help us to be bold. And yeah, Lord, thank you so much for uh, John chapter 9. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Lord. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys very much once again for joining me. Have a fantastic day. Um, yeah. God bless. Bye.